What we are seeing is that there's been finally that growth of uh, data uh, services that the operators have invested so much money in 3G exactly for that purpose and now suddenly it's taken off in a big way uh, but the revenues aren't following. Um, so the operators need to invest more and more to keep up with the demand uh, yet they're not seeing the same revenue. So we are seeing cases where the operators are, are looking to be able to manage their resources in a more uh, acceptable way without uh, affecting negatively the average consumer. So we're, we're seeing a lot about bandwidth management, which is not about uh, stopping people from doing anything. It's just about assigning the bandwidth in a more fair way for all customers. Um, and what we're doing is to recorrer toda the information that there is dentro de la red de, sobre, sobre el usuario y hacer una, una, un match entre la red y la información que hay de cliente dentro de los sistemas de IT. Y lo que estamos haciendo es segmentar todo esto y mirar con un conjunto de, de tools de, de data mining, eh, mirar el comportamiento de, de, de esos clientes y, y tener acciones de segmentación eh, basadas en, en campaign management después para puntos específicos, puntos como uh, churn management, um, puntos como uh, tener una oferta segmentada directa al cliente basada en su, su profile. La experiencia eh, por cada cliente, ¿qué significa? Que si por ejemplo va a hablar una señora de 60 años y una adolescente de 15 que con el mismo problema, pues la forma de atenderlo es totalmente diferente, ¿no? Quizá la señora de 60 años que quizá utiliza su celular simplemente para hacer llamadas, bueno, hay que decirle, bueno, aplique el botón verde, después el número, etcétera, ¿no? Pero a mi otro cliente que también tiene el mismo problema y es una de 15 años que manda mensajes y hace y deshace con el teléfono, pues obviamente su, su forma de experiencia hacia el sistema es totalmente diferente, ¿no? Es más puntual, tiene otro tipo de incluso de promociones o etcétera. ¿no? Tenemos estudios en los que los propios eh, clientes de los operadores, por ejemplo, han manifestado que ellos estarían dispuestos a gastar un porcentaje importante más en comunicaciones si somos capaces de ofrecerle estas herramientas y que los operadores tengan una infraestructura de BSS o SS pues eh, más moderna para responder a esos servicios que está pidiendo el mercado. ¿no? Yeah, you're absolutely right. There's a fine line between personalization and privacy, but actually Uh, in our understanding of personalization, it's actually about offering services to the customers that they want to choose from. So being able to offer uh, a much broader palette of options for the, uh, for, for the subscriber. If you imagine us uh, as a customer of a supermarket, for example, you have a lot of options. You, you can buy uh, uh, the same product from different companies. You can have different brands, etc. And And what you choose at the end in your supermarket trolley is really just down to you. Nobody else will buy exactly the same goods. And it's all about offering the same sort of choice to customers. It's not about intruding into their lives, it's about offering them what they want. Hay, hay cositas pequeñitas como antes, no sé si sabías, pero antes se empezaba por llamar al cliente y tratar al cliente por su nombre. Eh, eso es un problema y un error. Uh, porque eh, al cliente entonces la imagen que hay es, ¿por qué sabes todo de mí? Entonces eh, es mucho más... Um, una, 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 un tratamiento de, de customer management que, que tecnología. Entonces, Generally, what we have found in practice is, as long as there's a clear, defined benefit from the end user, they don't see this as invasion of privacy. They see this as a clearly value-added benefit to them. Uh, one metric that I do recall from my early days in WAP platforms is the average attrition rate on a per-click basis, so per step basis, in order is in order of 10%. So if you can eliminate one, two, three, or more steps in terms of providing for end user benefit, in terms of providing the optimal rate plan, optimal optimal service plan, you will provide a clear value benefit that they will value and actually pay more for in terms of the end user offering. We see a, a fairly broad demand for this market because what we're seeing is an explosive growth of data consumption really driven by uh, more innovative devices. Devices are, look more like PCs in terms of their screen size and capabilities, number one. Number two is 
the continued uh, flat rate uh, data plans that are becoming much more uh, common. And then uh, third, uh, as the network in bandwidth increases, uh, we're seeing that being a, a, a demand driver. And fourth is the openness of the devices and the services and the networks causing an explosion. So uh, that is creating an opportunity for what we're describing as context-aware mediation, which is between the networks, uh, network operators, and the broader ecosystem of services out there. Sure. Well, one of the things, and, and your uh, readers would know this well, is that the cost of running the networks has absolutely outpaced the revenue that they're receiving from their subscribers. And so increasingly managing the traffic on the network is a top priority. So we announced a new solution this week, which literally lets the service provider, you know, manage the traffic flow through the network. And it's very strategic because that way they can segregate what goes through at top speed versus what can go through in a more secondary nature. Operators have this incredible asset. It's knowledge and information about the subscriber in the network. Today, they don't monetize it. They don't do anything with that asset. And it's not easy for them to figure out how to connect to all these content providers. So they have this information, but they don't really know um, how to use it and share it under the right privacy and security and, and policies. Well, we as a company, Comtel, are seeing a tremendous amount of interest in, uh, in policy control, which is what this is all about. Um, and, and I think the, the driver there is, is particularly in the mobile broadband, because if you think of Latin America, the, uh, the penetration of fixed broadband is relatively low. Um, and mobile broadband becomes the broadband service. So it's a huge opportunity for operators. But they've seen also what's happened in, in other markets, in Europe, in, in North America, in Asia. And, and they want to protect themselves against that happening to them. They want to, to, to achieve the right revenues while controlling the amount of resources, as well as keeping the customer satisfied. The most complex is the quantity of information that you have to treat in real time, point one. Punto dos es la correlación de todos los eventos, porque hay un, cuando hay un problema tienes un conjunto de alarmas, pero en la realidad son uno, y tienes que correlacionar todo y tener uno solo. Entonces, esos son los temas principales que estamos tratando. Um, y después, al final, es, tienes que tener un tool donde, donde, y eso no hay mucho que es, dentro del CRM, tienes que tener un punto donde están los service level agreements contratados con el, el corporate account y con tu proveedor de contenidos y hacer todo este matching. Y eso lo estamos haciendo y nosotros lo hacemos con el tool que tenemos que se llama Right hacer, para hacer eso todo. Uh, so I think as a topic, it has raised an awareness because of the experience with AT&T and the iPhone in particular. Um, and as we see 3G penetration going up, uh, 3G penetration, we're at 50%, we'd have a terrible problem in most networks. And with 4G coming online, I think it's just going to make that problem even worse. So I think that uh, carriers are definitely becoming aware that this is a problem that they need to figure out how to manage. And again, in our approach, it's that you should not have to manage it, manage it on a network-wide basis. It should be personalized. So if some rich kid wants to have as much as he wants, fine, let him pay for it. If someone else wants to be careful with their spending, then they should get uh, the benefit of that as well. In particular, we think that there needs to be a fair pay uh, kind of approach. So uh, all you can eat plan probably is not a rational plan. We believe that flat rate plans won't necessarily disappear, but there will be a requirement to provide for some new rate plans, whether it's usage metering or something which has yet been defined in terms of mobile sponsorship, mobile advertising, that will provide things for free or near free from the end user perspective, yet will provide value to the carrier as well in terms of a win-win to provide them a return on investment on their significant capital and infrastructure that they are deploying at this point in time.